Hi everyone, meteorologist Brian Bennett. Here's your very latest update on Red Tide for Tuesday, September 25th. And I want to keep this video as brief as possible. So two main points, what are conditions like right now and what can we expect in the coming days? Here's the very latest satellite image. And in case you have problems seeing this on your mobile device or your cell phone, I've actually highlighted an orange where Red Tide is impacting areas anywhere from low concentration all the way up to high concentrations again anywhere in this orangish color here which is about the equivalent of the size of Connecticut so still a very large bloom occurring offshore most of our areas keep in mind that yes red tide could vary from say the high range to much lower uh, depending on exactly what beach you're located at one thing I did want to differentiate here though is from space we can actually see where the concentrations are the very highest and in the red color here is where we're seeing an extremely dense and thick bloom and that is occurring offshore Pinellas County and offshore of Sanibel Island as well. How does that compare to last week? Here's last week's satellite image from September 18th and Pinellas County let's start there. Well first of all notice last week compared to this week You'll notice offshore the water kind of darkened a little bit. That tells me that the bloom has actually intensified, if not worsened, in areas offshore. And of course, we know it's pretty bad for areas around St. Pete Beach. Uh, areas north, Clearwater Beach north, basically have improved a little bit. And Honeymoon Island and uh, folks up in northern Pinellas and Pasco County, uh, the water there is actually looking uh, not too bad at the moment. In fact, if you want to comment below and let me know how the water is exactly where you're located, that would be appreciated and may be helpful for other folks viewing this as well. Uh, but again, bottom line is the offshore red tide appears to have grown a little bit offshore of Pinellas County. Now let's head down to Sarasota, Venice area and taking a look at last week, you can see you had to go pretty far out in order to start seeing a little bit healthier water. Now it looks like that area has shrunk a little bit, so you don't have to go quite as far out to start seeing lower concentrations of red tide. That doesn't change the fact that it's still some pretty nasty water along a lot of area beaches and Manatee and Sarasota counties. Head farther south, we're looking at a really dark brown, dense area of red tide offshore Sanibel. And no big surprise there. Of course, this is where all the nutrients dump out from the Caloosahatchee River and Lake Okeechobee area and the associated watershed. So a uh, very dense red tide continuing in this location, almost like somebody poured a whole bunch of coffee out in the Gulf of Mexico with that really murky brown looking color. All right, so what can we expect over the next seven days? There are really two parameters that make the most sense to look at. First of all, the wind and the Gulf currents. The winds are going to control whether you're choking to death out at the beach due to the airborne brevitoxins that are being released from Crinia brevis. So what we want to see is an offshore wind. An offshore wind would have an easterly component and of course an onshore wind would have a westerly component. For the most part over the next three days the predominant wind will be from the southeast which is good news there. That will keep the brevitoxins offshore for the most part. Uh, we do have a brief period during the afternoon where we'll get a bit of a Gulf sea breeze and that's going to bring uh, some of the brevitoxins onshore in small order but again after the sun sets we'll go back to that easterly wind again so really not too bad over the next three days as far as the winds go saturday sunday monday and tuesday the winds actually pick up out of the east at 10 to 15 knots so really pretty good conditions over the weekend helping to keep those uh, really irritants those airborne irritants blowing out into the gulf of mexico instead of blowing those onshore which is great news of course for anybody First of all, they want to, to go to any of the beaches. Second of all, anybody who perhaps lives within one mile of the Gulf of Mexico and might have asthma or allergies or any type of lung disease. The Gulf currents, good news here. We're going to see generally an easterly current for the next seven days. That'll help keep some of the higher concentrations farther out in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, over the next three days, we do have a southeasterly component, uh, which is probably going to help to keep this higher concentration located offshore of Pinellas County. But again, with that easterly current, that's going to help to keep the most dense red tide from coming ashore. 
if or when we do get winds blowing out of the west, that's not going to be good news. That's going to bring these denser blooms on shore. And it's also going to bring much higher concentrations of Crinia brevis ashore and also a higher fish kill being beached on area locations as well. So the bad news, the size of the bloom has not changed. So no immediate end to the red tide in sight. The good news, easterly winds will continue to help breathing conditions manageable over the next seven days. And also easterly gulf currents will help keep beaches from getting worse and minimize the beaching of additional dead fish. All right, guys, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.